Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elston, and in this video we're going to show you how to paint up an ultramarine. So in this video we're going to go through the steps of painting up an ultramarine. Now this is part of my Primaracy series, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say Primaracy, I'm basically going through a series of converting Primaris marines with Horus Heresy parts, just to make them look a bit more interesting, get my buzz back for Heresy. Currently we've done World Eaters, Imperial Fists, Iron Hands, and now we're doing the Ultramarines. And we started off by priming the model black and then using a white ink as a zenithal highlight. And here we have the model. As you can see, I've done various different conversion parts to make this as interesting as possible. The pose is a little bit janky, but it's half decent, so we'll run with that. Now we're going to use Imperial Blue as a starting point, this is going to be our base coat. Thin this down just a little bit, put it on light so we get those zenithal highlights come through and we still have an idea of where our volumes are on this model. It's worth noting in this video that airbrush control is kind of key. You'll need to be kind of light on the trigger, so yeah, get some practice in for this one. After doing that, we're going to use Magic Blue, and this is going to be uh, another sort of zenithal highlight. So again, thin down, rather light, we're just going to pick out the high points. When it comes to the shield though, go for the low points. We're going to use a kind of non-metallic metal effect here, and we're going to highlight the lower part of it to give a kind of metallic sheen finish to it. Small little brush strokes are the most effective use of this. Now we're going to use a technique which we've used on the other videos, like the Iron Hands and the Imperial Fists, and we're going to mark out our volume highlights. We're going to do this just with a white, and we're just going to block in where those highest points are. It looks very messy right now, but trust me, this does work. It's a bit of an interesting way of doing it, and it looks horrifying right now with the way I'm doing it, but trust me, this does work with the next steps we're doing afterwards. We're just picking out the highest points of this model. If you're not entirely sure where to place the highlights, have a look at some reference photos of your favourite painters and see how they've done their non-metallic metal effects. Pick those lines, copy them, and you'll start getting an understanding of where they should be. Now we're going to use Intense Blue from the Scale Color range. We're going to thin this down quite a lot. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go over what we've just done. This is going to blend, well start to blend at least, the white into the blue. It's going to look a little bit off at first, but we're going to do multiple, multiple thin layers of this. We're just going to gradually build up the fade between the white and the blue. And as you see, as you do more layers, you will see this start to make sense. And it starts to not look so janky, it actually looks kind of interesting. I added some magic blue to the mix because it was going rather dark, so I've added a lighter blue in there to allow the blend to be a little bit more easier. The dark blue was just a bit too much, so I've added a lighter blue to allow the white to blend into the current blue easier. What I do after this though, is go back to using the scale color ink tense blue and start using that as a shade. So we bring it back down again. So we've allowed it to transition up using a higher blue and now we're gonna bring it back down again with the darker blue again. There's no real set way of you should do this first or you should do this first. We're just using it until we've got to the desired effect. Now we're gonna use Panzer Aces Light Rubber. This is going to go over all the areas which are going to be white. I find it a lot easier to colour an area white by using a grey base coat. We're then going to add a little bit of white to the mix and we're just going to start highlighting up. The easiest part to see right now is on the shield here where the wings are. And yeah, all you want to do is pick out the majority of the area, just leave some of the deepest recesses showing. Also as well, when you're highlighting up stuff like the U, or the Ultima symbol, pick areas where you it's not going to be fully white. So you want to leave some of the areas that have the darkest points. So again, I'm doing a kind of non-metallic effect here. I'm leaving the highest point darker and the lowest point lighter. And then what we're going to do is just keep on adding white into the mix. You want to make sure you thin this down. White can go very chalky very quickly, so make sure it's thinned down and just repeat the processes until you're happy. 
Now we're going to use Balthazar gold, and this is just going to block in all the gold areas. I know I'm mixing an elements of non-metallic metal with true metallic metal, but I do tend to find this works very well. If we were to do a non-metallic metal for all the gold, we would be here all day. And as much as I like doing masterpiece models and stuff like that, this is more to show an intermediate level of painting. So we're going to show some basic techniques, and we're also going to show some more advanced ones but we're not going to go into the realms of non-metallic metal if this doesn't go on straight first time don't worry go back in with the second layer just to make it completely solid now we're going to use iron hand steel and we're going to block in all the normal steel metal areas this includes the skull on the top the vents on his backpack the spear tip and the spear power generator and then the other areas you think should have this kind of coloring. Now we're going to use pallid witch flesh just to block in the pouches that are on his belt. You could use white, We basically you need a light underlayer here because we're going to use contrast paints to effectively tint it. And also you want to do the grip on the spear as well. Now we're going to use Panzer Ace's dark rubber and this is just going to fill in all the gaps in between the armor plates effectively. At the back of the knee, the point of the hips the inner elbow you could wash this down but i tend to find that it's enough now we're going to use shy's purple and this can be thinned down and we're going to do some sort of pin washing here and we're just going to highlight all those panel lines all those crevices where the, the armor's meeting up we're going to accentuate them this helps bring back some definition to the model instead of it just looking blue also as well if you're quick enough if you get any mistakes you can just quickly wipe it off with your finger now we're going to use Retributor Armor and this is going to highlight the Balthazar Gold. You want to paint most of the area with this, however leave some of the shadowy areas so that at least you have a gradient showing. This just adds a little bit more visual interest to it rather than it being block gold. Also we're going to use some non-metallic metal effects here and we're going to highlight up some of the lower areas. There's no rule saying that you can't use non-metallic metal effects on true metallic metal, and this just adds a little bit of interest. Now we're going to add silver into the mix, and uh, this is going to mix in with the gold, and we're going to just start doing our highlights. As I said before, we're going to use some non-metallic metal effects by highlighting the lower areas. I know this does seem weird, but it really does give off a more interesting sort of visualization and gives a representation of what metal and gives off a representation of what light does do with metal. Now we're going to use snake bite leather and this is going to go over the pouches that we blocked in early with pallet witch flesh. Just drench them here. Contrast paint seems to work best when you just kind of fill up the area with a pretty thick coat. So don't do the two thin coats, just go for one thick one. Now we're going to use Saigor brown and this is going to be just for blocking in the handle as well. So I just wanted to add at this point, if you are liking the content, please hit the subscribe button, like button, and share it around to anyone else that you think might like this content. Now we're going to do the most tedious part of this, and this is some edge highlighting. This is with Lothurn Blue. All I'm doing is picking out the raised areas with this. This is the most tedious step. If you were doing an entire army, I probably wouldn't do this. However, that's up to you. If you like edge highlighting, then by all means go for it. What I would suggest though, is if you do this and you do find it looks a little bit off, come back in with some washes, some blue washes. You could use Army Painter Blue Tone or Drakenhof Nightshade and just water them down and come back in and it does help sort of make the impact less harsh. Now we're going to use Contrast Paint Black Templar and this is going to paint over the gun and his little mohawk crest. Now we're going to use non-oil gloss and this is going to wash down all the areas which are steel coloured. 
I do find the gloss paints are much better for washing metallics. They seem to leave a nicer finish. The matte ones tend to matte, well, obviously matte them down, but they, there's something which does a disconnect with me. So I do like using the gloss metallics here to get a nicer effect. If you want to use the matte one, that's completely fine as well. However, I do like the gloss for metallics more. Now we're going to use Agrax Earthshade Gloss and we're going to wash down all the gold areas. This really brings up the definition and allows the miniature to pop. This is one of the most satisfying steps that I have in miniature painting is putting the wash on just to see all that detail come back. You put some nice blends in, it looks very nice from a blurred perspective but putting the wash back on just brings all that detail back in with all the blends and it just makes it a bit more complete. So yeah, this is one of my favourite parts of painting. And we're just going to use a black paint to paint the spear up. Now we're going to use magic blue and we're going to create a little bit of a power field effect going on in here. Interestingly enough, I just finished watching The Mandalorian as well and the dark saber had really had me inspired. And I noticed that the normal gloss had made the majority of the spear black. So I thought, why not? Let's try and replicate the dark saber to a degree. So I used a blue and then started highlighting up with white, just adding more and more white as progressive steps go on. And sooner or later, I'm ending up with a dark spear saber thing. Dark saber spear. I don't know. It, I like the effect. I'm probably going to use this a fair bit on other ones because I really do like that effect. How much I use it, I don't know, and how much it works on other models, I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure I'm going to try this out in the future. Now we're going to use dark green, and this is just going to paint up the laurels. You can do these laurels in gold if you really wanted to, that would work. I just wanted to break up the monotonous of white, gold, and blue, so I added a green in there. All I did was base coat it, and then do a kind of overbrush with a lighter green afterwards. Also, we're going to do the eye lenses, this is the most trickiest part. But here's the lighter green, we're going to use Warpstone Glow, and as I said, it's like an overbrush over it to catch all the raised areas. And we're also going to highlight his eye lenses by touching up the very corner closest to the nose. Then we're going to add some white and do the same again. And then we're going to add a tiny little dot of white in the opposite corner to give off the impression of a reflection. Then I came back in and did a little bit more edge highlighting just to tidy it up a little bit where it may have gone a bit strange. As much as I don't like edge highlighting, a couple of bits of advice for doing it is thin down your paints as a very important side of things. Also, if you can run your brush along the edge of things, it does make it easier. I don't always do this, but I would advise doing it if you can. Now I'm going to paint the little canister black and then highlight that up just by adding a little bit of white to the black mix to get a grey and we'll just do a little bit of a highlight with this a little bit of wet blending while it's still wet now we're going to do the dings and dents and all the scratches and stuff like that if you see my world eaters video or my imperial fist video you would have seen how i've done this and Yes, there's not much different. All we do is do some white dots and slashes everywhere, bits and bobs, and then we go over the top of that with a black. This gives the impression of a scratch and it gives the highlighted area underneath while the deepest recesses of the top where shadows would occur first and then the highlight would catch on the returning edge. Now we're going to highlight up the mohawk with grey and just add a bit more white to it again to highlight it up. There's not much more to it at that point. It's a, a black, then a grey, then a lighter grey. And then I come back in with thin down black after that to kind of neaten it up, back up again. Now the white was looking a bit off to me, so I decided to try the apothecary white from the contrast range. I was going to use this as a blend, so it was more of a glaze rather than anything else. I'm not entirely sure whether or not it worked. It did blend, 
by all means, it, the transition between the whites and the greys became very smooth. However, um, I tried to use it in the areas where I wanted more recess and more shadows, and not so much. I still need to play with this paint to fully understand how to use it best. And here's our finished model. As I said, this is part of my Primaracy series. We're going to keep on looking at more Space Marines and adding Horus Heresy parts to them to see how we can mash 30k and 40k together with the Primaris Space Marines that are currently about with the old Horus Heresy ones. If I was going to do something different with this one, I probably would have gone back and added some decals and a bit more details. There's a fine line between being a zealot and also being a practical Horus Heresy Marine. And I think maybe he might have had a few more markings on him. However, I'm pretty happy with the result. So if you did like this video, please hit the subscribe button, like, share it around, you know, all the jazz. There's more videos coming out in the future, so stay tuned for them. I've got my eye on a Death Guard model, so that's going to be an interesting one to paint up next. Until next time, everyone, be good, be safe, and I shall see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.